Ghana is one of a kind. Um, we have a mixed bag of uh, goodies when it comes to tourism. When you talk about heritage tourism, we are number one. When it comes to culture, we are there. When it comes to adventure, we are there. So we offer something for everybody. But more importantly, Ghana has a unique position as a center of the world. And so in terms of access to various markets, by five hours you are in Johannesburg, uh, six hours to Europe, uh, 10 hours to the Americas. Um, so everywhere you want to connect to Ghana really is a gateway to Sub-Saharan Africa. And being the center of the world is something that you don't want to miss. I mean, tourism is increasingly one of our biggest segments of the market as the country uh, seeks to diversify. It's even becoming more imperative that we focus more on tourism. So some of the things that we are doing um, currently is looking at tourism investment and how we can promote uh, investment within the sector. The areas, uh, we have been blessed. If you go to uh, most of the communities, you have waterfalls, people uh, wake up in the morning and they have lakes that have opened up in front of their houses and all that. So in t we are not lacking in terms of attractions. Now the game is how do we now make these attractions more experiential for visitors. So it's not just a dip in and dip out. They come and have the experience of, I came in, I visited, I ate the food, I interacted with the people. So those are the things that we are doing, bringing in investment into the attractions, the sites, making sure that uh, the experience, the visitor experience around our attractions are improved. So as a uh, fourth um, GDP um, earner for the country, tourism is doing well, but we want to put it even further into the top two, I mean, as we look to diversify the economy. When it comes to investment, we can talk of the Lebanese, also the Indian companies like the Melcom, the Lebanese too are into trade. Aside that, we have the timber industry, especially the wood processing industry here. Then we also have the gold refinery. Then we also have the Dutch, that's ADM, they are into cocoa processing. And currently, in West Africa sub-region, they have the biggest plant in processing cocoa. Aside that, to, we have the construction industry, where we have the Italians, the CONSA, that is championing the a number of infrastructure, especially at KNUST, and also other part of the city has been built by this Italian company, CONSA. Last year, Ghana, uh, did about 8.3% uh, growth, which is one of the highest um, around the world. And it's one of the uh, most uh, stable economies that we have in Africa. And so all the things are in place. Plus, we have a very uh, strong push for private sector initiatives. And so whether it's in tourism, whether it's in manufacturing, and um, some of the projects that government is pushing aggressively, one district, one factory, uh, in agriculture, making sure that we mechanize our agriculture. All these things are coming together. And so for us, uh, in tourism especially, we have projects that are opening up. We have a 241-acre marine drive project on the beach. Uh, we have uh, an eco resort in Winneba, 45 minutes from the capital. Uh, we have the center of the world project, iconic towers. All these things are, are being laid out, and more importantly, providing investment opportunities and incentives for investors who are interested in turning around their money. Often the dilemma of any investor is one, the market. Whatever products that I'm coming to produce, whatever infrastructure that I'm coming to put in place, do I have the market for it? And with Kumasi, I'll say yes, because currently it's the most popular city in Ghana. Based on a population growth rate of 3.196%. Currently, we have a resident population of 2.5 million, then a floating population of 1.5 million. The reason being that it's a transit city. All the landlord countries like Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso have to use Kumasi to assess those places. And the northern sector of the country to have to use Kumasi before they can assess the capital. So it's serving as a transit point for about 30 million people. So the market is there. Then you come to what should we invest in? When you come to the real estate industry, now Kumasi is changing. It's becoming a cosmopolitan in nature. Hence the need for high income residential area is, is on the demand, especially 
around the palace, the Mensha Palace. The king has given over 80 acres of land to be developed into that. Then also, since we are in Ghana, there are a couple of incentives that any investor stands to gain, like the um, tax holidays, and specific like if you are coming to the pharmaceutical industry, the agro-processing industry and the rest, and farming, we have that tax incentives for you. One of the things that, I mean, I mentioned uh, warmth, culture, and rhythm. When we talk about culture, uh, Kumasi or the, the Ashanti Kingdom is one of our cultural uh, beacons, but it's in this raw state. And so what we are doing with uh, tourism is to uh, commoditize the culture that we have. How can we make it interesting to people who don't understand that culture? How can we tell the story better? And how can we make it a product that somebody will uh, sit on a plane for six hours and say, I'm going to enjoy the rich Ashanti culture. That's what we are doing.